Hello everyone, welcome to Dakshina E Classroom program. In today's lecture, I am going to discuss about the solution of problems asked in previous year, last 20 years IID paper based on the chapter projectile motion. So first let me tell you a few more things about this projectile motion. This chapter like it's a quite easy chapter, not very difficult and uh, sometimes like even the questions are good actually like in IID also and uh, a like, good question can be also formed on, from this chapter and uh, you will normally find actually the application of this chapter in other chapters. Normally like generally IID like ask a very less or you, can, you will say rarely question from this chapter also but yes I will say that in previous or last few years IIT has asked actually few questions based on it in uh, 2019 and 2018 continuously in two years one question came from projectile motion in 2020 actually it uh, did not ask and before that also like only few questions has been asked from this so you can say like uh, it depends actually on uh, IIT like it can be asked uh, can ask some questions because even good question can be formed but more of that it's like uh, conceptual chapter you can say you need to understand the things because these concepts can be applied in other chapters also like in electrostatics you will see some problems which are actually like using the concept of projectile motion so overall like you should understand and it's like uh, not very difficult chapter also so let's continue now with the one problem here let me read this is asked in IIT advanced in 2019 so let me first explain you what is the problem exactly a ball is thrown from the ground at an angle theta so ball is thrown from the ground at an angle theta with the horizontal and with an initial speed of u naught for the resulting motion the magnitude of average velocity of the ball up to the point when it hits the ground for the first time is v1 okay after hitting the ground the ball rebounds at the same angle theta same angle theta with an reduced speed of u naught by alpha its motion continue for a long time as shown in the figure if the magnitude of average velocity of the ball for the entire motion of the motion is 0.8 v1 the value of alpha is so this is the problem so let me just break it down and like explain you so a ball is thrown so here you can say a ball is projected projected with some initial speed u naught at an angle of theta with the horizontal and for the resulting projectile motion magnitude of average velocity of the ball up to the point when it hits the ground for the first time means the up to this when the ball is hitting the ground for the first time this is the motion for this motion the average velocity i would say v average is given as v1 all right and you must understand what is the actually average velocity for a projectile motion so i will write if u naught is the then its component is u naught cos theta and this is u naught sin theta so we know actually when it is hitting the ground net displacement in y direction will be zero so that's why i can say the average velocity in y direction becoming zero but average velocity in like x direction uh, remains u naught cos theta because it's even constant so that's why i can write v naught is equal to actually u naught cos of theta okay we got this relation and it's up to here so this is the value of v1 after hitting the ground the ball rebounds at the same angle ball rebound at the same angle given as theta but with a reduced speed of u naught by alpha so now the speed is becoming u naught by alpha okay its motor motion continue for long time as shown in the figure and this process is continuously so for the after first collision ball speed reduces by u naught by alpha or uh, become u naught by alpha after second collision it become u naught by basically 1 by alpha times of this velocity initial velocity so that is u naught by alpha square and next time it's becoming u naught by alpha cube and then based on this it's also given if the magnitude of average velocity of the ball for entire duration of the motion is 0.8 v1 the value of alpha is asked so now you need to tell the value of alpha so this is the problem and let me explain you how we can approach 
so you need to understand it first clearly that what exactly it's asking what it is saying actually okay so i hope like uh, you must be clear with the problem that what is actually given in the question and what it want to ask so let me tell you now solution so first thing is based on it we understood this is the average velocity up to first uh, like is the time it is hitting the ground and v1 we will we are writing it because it's given it's uh, v1 and that comes out to be u0 into cos theta and uh, v1 i can write uh, i will say this is let's say r0 then this is after first collision r1 this is r2 so and let's say up to here t0 time t1 and t2 so till the infinite time is it because it's motion is continuously we can write the average velocity v average is given by total displacement divided by total time taken okay so if i take it simply like uh, after infinite uh, number of collisions total displacement will be what r0 plus r1 plus r2 plus so on and total time taken will be t0 plus t1 plus t2 plus so on is it so that way or uh, let me first write r0 is equal to what u0 square sin 2 theta divided by z r1 will be now u becoming what u0 by alpha rest everything remaining constant so you can write it's u0 square sin 2 theta divided by alpha square into z into g similarly i can write r1 is uh, r2 is equal to what u0 square sin 2 theta divided by alpha power 4 into g this is equal to r0 by alpha square equal to r0 by alpha power 4 and so on similarly i can write t0 is equal to what 2 u0 into sin theta divided by z and t1 is equal to 2 u0 sin theta divided by alpha into z that is t0 by alpha and similarly t2 will be 2 u0 sin theta divided by alpha square into z that is t0 by alpha square and so on right so now based on it i just simply calculated the value of range or basically displacement you can say in one projectile motion and the time taken so now it's given for the remaining is it with the reduced speed and its motion continue for a long time as shown in the figure up to infinity if the magnitude of average velocity so let's calculate the magnitude of average velocity for entire motion i already got the magnitude of average velocity for uh, the duration it is hitting the ground first time and now let me erase this part <clears throat> okay so average velocity now i can write v average this is equal to r0 plus r1 plus r2 plus r3 and so on divided by total time taken t0 plus t1 plus t2 plus t3 and so on and uh, substituting these values let me substitute everything directly only in terms of r0 so this is coming out to be r0 r0 by alpha square r0 by alpha power 4 so on and this is t0 plus t0 by alpha plus t0 by alpha square and so on taking r0 t0 common then i am left we are left with 1 plus 1 by alpha square 1 by alpha power 4 so on and 1 plus 1 by alpha plus 1 by alpha square plus so on and this is a gp actually and here we must uh, know the formula of gp geometrical progression it's a plus a r plus a r square plus so on then its formula sum is given by a into this is 1 minus r raised to power n divided by 1 minus r and here in this r1 will be equal to 1 by 
alpha square and r2 is equal to 1 by alpha okay and a in both the cases it's coming out to be 1 so let me now substitute the values and then v average this is coming out to be r0 by t0 into for upper it's 1 minus alpha square power n divided by 1 minus 1 by alpha square whole divided by 1 minus 1 by alpha power n divided by 1 minus 1 by alpha i hope uh, you are not getting confused with this term and simplifying further r naught by t naught i am simply keeping it outside first thing is alpha is definitely what greater than one so one by alpha square will be like what smaller than one and n is tending to infinity so that way this term will be almost tending to zero and this term will be also tending to zero clear then i am left with basically it will be like taking lcm it will be alpha square divided by alpha square minus one and uh, i can write it basically still in denominator similarly here it will be one minus this is zero this is uh, taking lcm it's alpha divided by alpha minus one and then simplifying it further r naught by t naught this is alpha square by alpha square minus one into alpha minus one by alpha one alpha gets cancelled alpha square minus one square i can write that that will be alpha minus one and alpha plus one alpha minus one will be cancelled out and we are left with simply r naught by t naught numerator it's alpha denominator here it's alpha plus one right i hope you are clear up to here then now let me erase this part okay so now uh, let me substitute the value and average value for entire motion remember that r naught u naught square sine i am writing it 2 u naught square sine theta cos theta divided by g and t is 2 u naught sine theta divided by g g g cancel 2 2 cancel u naught 1 cancel sine theta cancel we are left with u naught into cos theta multiplied by alpha divided by 1 plus alpha and this is given as 0 0.8 v1 that is 0 0.8 into u naught into cos theta and u naught cos theta is also cancelled this implies alpha divided by 1 plus alpha is equal to 0 0.8 simplifying it alpha equal to 0 0.8 plus 0 0.8 alpha and taking it this side it's 0 0.2 alpha is equal to 0 0.8 and this implies alpha is coming out to be 4 this is the answer to this problem so here the part the thing information given was that one projectile was fired with some speed u naught at an angle theta with the horizontal for the time being it is hitting the ground for the first time the average velocity that we can write simply v1 is equal to u naught cos theta so it's given as average velocity is v1 after hitting it's bouncing back with the reduced speed and the speed is becoming u naught by alpha but the angle still remains same and again is it hitting the ground and bouncing back with the further reduced speed that is u naught by alpha square and at same angle this way the motion is continuously like going on keep on going on up to infinite time is it finally it will be falling now it is asking uh, it is given up to the final time infinite time when it is hitting the uh, like finally is it uh, almost you can say landing on the ground after long time the average velocity is given as 0 0.8 times of v1 and v1 is this this is the information given so we just calculated like what is the meaning of average velocity and what will be the average velocity in this case when it is hitting infinite times so that we can write because in vertical direction y direction there is no velocity once it is like jumping and landing back but 
uh, average velocity in y direction will be becoming simply zero in every projectile or even for a long time after it is hit finally landing on the ground is it i am assuming here that at infinite time or long time after it will be finally on the ground so in that way i can write always the vertical component of uh, velocity will be average velocity will be zero then net displacement in the horizontal direction that will be r0 plus r1 plus r2 so on and total time taken is t0 plus t1 plus t2 plus so on we calculated the values of these things and then substitute it and now simplifying here you need to use a gp that is geometrical progression formula you must be remembering that too also then only you will be able to proceed it from this step to next step otherwise not so using these r1 r2 and substituting the formula and simplifying it finally we are getting this and substituting the values of r0 and t0 and we are getting this 1 plus alpha 1 by 1 plus alpha is equal to 0.8 v1 and you know cos theta that is also finally getting cancelled out and this is the final relation simplifying it we are getting it alpha is equal to 4 so that is this is all about this problem it's a good problem and i hope it makes sense to you also like what exactly like this question is but i would not say that it's like very difficult yeah it's a good problem let's see with the next question okay so the next problem a ball is projected at an angle of 45 degree with the horizontal surface it reaches a maximum height of 120 degree uh, 120 meter and return back to the ground upon hitting the ground first time is it for the first time it loses half of its kinetic energy immediately after bounce the ball the velocity of ball make an angle of 30 degree with the horizontal surface the maximum height it reaches after bounce in meter is so i think like this problem is a little bit uh, seems to be easy and uh, it should be making sense so here what is given is that a ball is projected with some speed let's say you not i would say at an angle of 45 degree okay and it's given that it's reaching a h max of 120 meter and it's landing back on the ground and the point is that after it is like it is bouncing back after hitting it's losing half of its kinetic energy is it so in this situation the situation will be something like that the velocity will be some v okay after hitting and the angle also changes to 30 degree and the question it is asking is that the maximum height it reaches after bounce so now in this situation what will be this h max i would say one this is the question so i hope it should make sense like exactly how we can uh, you can think about it what what can be the like best approach for it so let's take it you not we will get the relation for v with the this for the first time it loses half of its, its kinetic energy this condition is sufficient to get the relation of v with u naught so let me first write the h max so i can write uh, in this situation for initial motion i can write h max it's simple u naught square sine square theta divided by 2g and it clearly it's given theta is equal to how much 45 degrees so h max equal to u naught square divided by 4g this is given as 120 meter after hitting ground for first time it's clearly mentioned that kinetic energy final it's losing half of its kinetic energy means final energy remaining will be also half i can write its k initial divided by 2 and that means half m v square must be half of kinetic energy half m u naught square m m gets cancelled half half gets cancelled this implies v is coming out to be u naught by root 2 clear and in this situation angle of projection theta is given as 30 degree so now what is the h max it's simple straightforward formula based problem now here is it so i can write h max 1 means after first collision will be equal to what v square 
साइन स्क्वायर थीटा डिवाइडेड बाय टू जी सब्सटीट्यूटिंग द वैल्यूज वी स्क्वायर मीन्स यू नॉट स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय टू मल्टीप्लाइड बाय साइन थीटा थीटा इज थर्टी डिग्री सो मीन्स इट्स लाइक साइन स्क्वायर थीटा वन बाई फोर मल्टीप्लाइड बाई जी दिस कम्स आउट टू बी वन बाई फोर टाइम्स ऑफ आर आई कैन राइट जस्ट वेट टू विल बी देयर ऑल्सो वन इज रूट टू सो दिस इज वी स्क्वायर इज कमिंग आउट टू बी दिस इज ओवर ओवरऑल क्वान्टिटी इज वी स्क्वायर साइन स्क्वायर टीटा फॉर दैट आई गॉट वन बाई फोर एंड टू विल बी ऑल्सो देयर वन मोर टू विल बी देयर टू इंटू जी एंड दिस कम्स आउट टू वन बाई फोर इंटू फोर इंटू जी इंटू यू नॉट स्क्वायर एंड वॉट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस गिवन टू यू इट्स क्लियर वन ट्वेंटी मीटर सब्सटीट्यूटिंग दैट एंड सिंप्लीफाइंग इट इट्स वन ट्वेंटी डिवाइड बाई फोर दैट कम्स आउट टू बी थर्टी मीटर दिस इज द आंसर टू द प्रॉब्लम सो आई होप इट्स वुड बी लाइक क्लियर टू एवरी वन बट स्टिल लेट मी एक्सप्लेन यू अगेन द क्वेश्चन इज सिंपली सेइंग इज दैट बॉल इज प्रोजेक्टेड विथ सम इनिशियल स्पीड एट एन एंगल ऑफ फोर्टी फाइव डिग्री इट्स गिवन दैट इट्स मैक्सिमम हाइट इज वन ट्वेंटी मीटर सो मैक्सिमम हाइट इज वन ट्वेंटी मीटर इट इज हिटिंग द ग्राउंड and it's losing half of its kinetic energy so that it's clearly mentioned that means after hitting the ground it will be bouncing back with some different speed v and angle is also mentioned to you it's bouncing at an angle of 30 degree so i calculated by using that condition of uh, kinetic energy i calculated the relation of v with the u not we got this and theta is already mentioned so h max 1 i mean like maximum height in uh after first collision that can be written in this way substituting the values and we are getting this and this value is having 120 meter so 120 by 4 and that's ultimately solving we are getting 30 meter so this is the problem this is the and this question was asked in iit 2018 so these two question that i just discussed are continuously asked in 2018 and 19 and before that there are like very few almost like one or two question has been asked like before these two here continuously two years iit has asked a uh, problem from projectile motion so that way like it you might feel or i can say its importance is a little bit increasing but in previous years the questions asked by iit from this chapter is quite less actually okay so let's see the next question from projectile motion okay so the next problem question number 3 A projectile is given an initial velocity of i cap plus 2j cap meter per second, where i is along the ground and j is along the vertical axis. So this is i, and this is j. And one projectile is given fired with some velocity i cap plus 2j cap. So means I can write u x is equal to one. and u y is equal to 2 meter per second and a x is 0 definitely a y will be g that is minus 10 meter per second square because double one this is the information given to us the equation of its trajectory it's asked and this question was asked in actually 2013 mains okay so equation of trajectory it's actually like very simple concept but you must be familiar with it you must know that how we get the equation of trajectory for a projectile motion once you know it then it's like just a very simple question if you are not aware of that then it may be definitely difficult for you so at least try to understand what like what is the approach if you are not remembering if you are remembering then you must be finding it very easy actually so here we got already this ux uy this means that ax ay so let's say What is the x coordinate? Is it position of projectile at, or I will say after time t? So x can be written as what? U x into t. That means one into t. That means simply t. And y is equal to what? U y into t minus half. A y into t square because a x is clearly given as zero. Substituting the values, it is two t minus ten by two into t square. This comes out to be two t minus five t square. Clear? 
so i got this now equation of trajectory means it is the relation between x and y coordinate of particle is it or projectile so this is y and that is x how can i get the relation between x and y by just simply eliminating t and t i can substitute from here so t is coming out to be what simply the value of x so let's substitute the value of x substitute t in y is it that means y is coming out to be 2 t is equal to x minus 5 this is x square and this is the equation of trajectory which matches with this option b so this is problem number three that is simple straightforward problem okay see the next problem so a train is moving along straight line with constant acceleration a a ball is standing in the train throw a ball forward with a speed of 10 meter per second at an angle of 60 degree with the horizontal <coughs> boy has to move forward by 1.15 meter inside the train to catch the ball back at the initial height the acceleration of train in meter per second square per second square is this is the problem asked in 2011 if i simply talk about iit advance then after 2000 like basically 11 IIT asked directly in 2018 is it so that you can see like uh, but whenever it is uh, like asking it actually ask some good question from uh, actually project Elmerson so that way like you can say it's like uh, you can't ignore this chapter also you need to focus you need to understand the things so let me explain you how exactly we can approach how we can solve this question so first let me explain what exactly the question is saying so let's say this is the train which is moving with constant acceleration a and one child is there and the child threw a ball at an angle of 60 degree and at the speed of 10 meter per second what will happen from child's frame i can say the projectile will be like this is it train is continuously also moving and child is jumping the ball again at same level but child has to move inside the train 1.15 meter and see here definitely one acceleration of g will be acting downward in in the train frame in the frame of child also and because child here is inside the train train is having one acceleration so means children is in or child is in non inertial frame so if i look at the ball from child frame or from child's position then ball will have a pseudo force or acceleration in this direction also i hope that should be make sense to you so now actually from the you can write train frame is it train frame is it so you can write for ball let's say the speed uh, it's clearly given so i can write let me write this is x and this is y so then first thing is ax is equal to what minus a meter per second square ay is minus 10 meter per second square ux you can write that is 10 cos 60 degree that is 5 meter per second and u y is 10 sine 60 degree that is 5 root 3 meter per second right simple up to here all right then time of flight is not going to affect by this acceleration that must be clear to you so this is basically projectile from a moving frame is it based concept and uh, based problem so now it's uh, clearly mentioned by the time the ball is landing is it or coming back to the same height the child has to move inside the train the 1.15 meter so first let's uh, calculate its time of flight so time of flight is equal to 2 u sin theta divided by g and that comes out to be 2 u is 10 into sin 60 sin 60 divided by 
g is tan and 60 is basically equal to root 3 by 2 that is root 3 second this is the time of flight okay now in this time ball is moving this much that means i can write the range of uh, ball is i mean children is child is moving this much so that means range of range of ball from train frame is it so that i can write r is equal to how much ux into t minus half ax into t square and this comes out to be that is given as 1.15 meter this is ux is 5 this ux5 into root 3 minus this is 1 by 2 into ax that we need to find into 3 right let's simplify bringing it 3a by 2 this is 5 multiplied by 1.73 minus 1.15 multiplying it it comes out to be <coughs> and uh, 8.65 minus 1.15 and uh, just simplifying it so 3a by 2 is equal to so this is uh, just wait all right so this is coming out to be 0.5 that means 0 and 5.7.5 is it and a is equal to 7.5 multiplied by 2 divided by 3 it's 15 by 3 that comes out to be 5 meter per second square so the acceleration of train we are getting this is what actually acceleration of train so acceleration of train is 5 meter per second square and this is the answer to this question so i hope uh, you are clear with this first read the problem carefully make sure you are understanding the things exactly information provided to you in the question accordingly is it or exactly in same way understanding then that i like most of the time we get the idea we get the approach automatically in the, our mind because we have already done a lot of uh, uh, problems in our practice in our study uh, duration so that means like you should be in position to uh, like check uh, to understand like what exactly what is the way what how need we need to approach so this is like a simple thing given only the point here the new thing is that this is a projectile from a moving frame that too the frame is having acceleration so you need to consider the pseudo force sort of like or you can write a relative acceleration is it so from child's frame or from the frame of train projectile will have relative acceleration will have acceleration in back direction or you can write it is because of pseudo force one acceleration in this direction so now we got this and initial velocity and then writing time of flight we can easily state uh, forward because everything is provided so we are getting its root three second then for x direction it's given child is moving in this frame 1.15 meter so that is actually equal to range just substituting the value and simplifying we are getting the answer a is coming out to be five meter per second square and this is answer to problem okay so the next problem here and uh, object a is capped fixed at the point x is equal to 3 and y equal to 1.25 meters so this is an object a basically uh, on a plank p raised above the ground so this is plank p and a object is kept at that and coordinate a, x 3 meter and y 1.25 meter at t is equal to 0 the plank will start moving along positive x direction with an acceleration of 1 point this is a 5 meter per second square so this is the acceleration of plank means acceleration of object also at the same instant a stone is projected from the origin with an velocity of u and so on so from here we are projecting an stone with velocity u here at t is equal to 0 a stationary person on the ground observe the observe the stone hitting the object during its downward motion so let's say after some time this will be moving in this direction and the projectile will be like this so it is hitting the ground hitting the projectile during its downward motion and uh, 
at an angle of 45 degree to the horizontal so that means this angle is 45 degree and this will be also 45 degree this more information is also given to you and then uh, like your all motions are in xy plane find u and the time after which the stone hits the ground find the velocity of stone and the time at which the stone will hit the plank or hit the object this is problem so i hope like uh, question must be clear and let's see now how we can approach so i can write let's say the angle is theta then i can write this is what ux that can be written as u cos theta and here u y will be u sin theta initial velocity in y direction and x direction okay so now we are looking at everything like from this frame a person standing on the ground okay so now what is happening like let the stone hits the plank at t time because everything is starting at t is equal to zero so let's say at t time stone is hitting the plank or hitting the object then at the time of hitting i can write from this frame the x coordinate and y coordinate of this stone and this plank must be same and plank is simultaneously having acceleration this another point here is that here y direction is actually here like x and y direction this is you can just imagine it's downward motion that is possible means like this is actually y is a vertical direction is it then only it will be like downward direction if it is like in a horizontal plane then y it will be turning in this direction right i mean like it will not be turning in downward downward direction so here that means like uh, otherwise it will be traveling in this direction actually it's simply moving is it so this is the situation now we can say at the time of collision or hitting basically coordinate of stone and plank must be same right so that means this implies along x direction we can write this is u cos theta position or displacement of stone multiplied by t that you can write ux into t will be equal to what 3 meter is the displacement that already it's having and plus it will be also moving forward with the acceleration of 1.5 so half into a into t square so we got this is relation one clear another along y direction right these are simple things actually definitely collision this is hitting so these condition must satisfy right i can write similarly exactly in same manner and another thing is it's at the time it's hitting here so because y coordinate of the plank or an object is not changing right then that's why i can write y coordinate of stone will be at the time of collision will be always y stone will be what 1.25 meter and this should be equal to uy into t minus half gt square that you can write uy into t minus 5t square this is let's say equation number two let me erase this part this question now because we need it to solve we need some space okay so up to here then from these two relations first let me rearrange it so we are getting actually u by into t that you can write also u uh, sorry u x it's is it u x into t that is also equal to u cos theta into t that is equal to 3 plus substituting the values then 0 0.75 into t square one another rearranging that it's uh, 1.25 meter that is equal to u sin theta into t minus 5 t square 
another condition it's saying at the time of heating it's making an angle of 45 degree with the horizontal so that means it's v x and v y must be equal and it's during downward motion so that's why i can write velocity will be gt minus u y into i mean gt minus u y because in downward motion this term will be dominating so at the maximum net velocity is zero so means both becoming zero then it must keep on increasing so overall magnitude will be this and uh, at the time of hitting plan you can write 10 theta i mean like theta is 45 degree that means vy equal to vx that means gt minus this is uy is equal to ux i hope you understood this because this is magnitude i am simply writing and this implies ux plus uy into gt that is 10 t so let me multiply this equation by t then what i will get ux into t plus uy into t is equal to 10 t square and adding these two this is what this is ux into t and from here i can write this is uy into t equal to 1.25 plus 5 t square so just substituting this is this quantity is equal to adding these two that comes out to be 4.25 plus 5.75 into t square now let's rearrange it simplify it for t so simplifying for t so this is bringing it this side then it comes out to be what 10 minus 5.75 that is 4.25 into t square is equal to 4.25 this implies t square equal to 1 that implies t is equal to 1 second so at what time the stone will hit the plank or object it will be t equal to one second substituting these values here is it ux t equal to one and here three and this is t equal to one so from equation i will write the time at which the stone will so time stone will hit the plank is one second okay and from this i can write u cos theta i mean like uh, u x into t t is equal to one second this is three plus 0 0.75 into 1 square that's coming out to be 3.75 so ux is equal to 3.75 meter per second similarly using that time from equation number 2 uy into t that's equal to like uh, or i can substitute it directly here 1 this is equal to 1.25 plus 5 into 1 square this means u y is coming out to 6.25 meter per second from this i can write u velocity vector is 3.75 i cap 6.25 j cap meter per second this is the velocity of stone with which it was projected and the time when it is hitting the plank is given by one second so the question was good actually we need you need to focus you need to understand the problem carefully then only you will be and this question was asked in 2000 so actually iit after 2000 it has asked actually question in advance in 2000 then 2011 then directly 17 and 18 so you can see like it's not asking much questions like almost like uh, everywhere here questions are not asked 
but if you look for the chapter like wave optics modern physics lot of questions almost asked every year so from that point of view they are very much important but still this chapter is also like not you can't ignore it is it so but the question the point is this is easy if you are understanding the things it's not like a, a difficult chapter and uh, this is all about the problem which iit has asked from 2002 2020 is it so i hope all these questions should make sense to you you must be like understanding them and you like if you are facing some doubt that must be clear for you from after watching this video thank you so much